How's it going guys? Molten Lava here, and I am back with another tutorial video. This video we will be covering two different types of units, their strengths and weaknesses, and how to use them effectively. These two unit types would happen to be artillery and jamming units. Now as you can see, I have all the artillery and jamming units in my loadout here, and I'm going to be briefly covering uh, what they are, what they do, and what their, uh, I guess, their special qualities about them are. So, let's start with artillery. First, we have the arty. This is the lowest class artillery. It has the shortest range, and it does the least amount of damage. But, uh, it does have something special about it that I will discuss after we've gone over the jamming units. In the meantime, let's move on to the Archie. The Archie is the middle class artillery. It has the, uh, I guess, the medium, the, the median range of the Archie and the Bertha here. Uh, more range than the Archie, less than the Bertha. It does, again, more damage than the Archie and less damage than the Bertha. And it does more splash damage than the Archie here. So the Archie is definitely preferable over the Archie over the arty if you're trying to get distance and damage. And then we have the Bertha, which is the mother of all artillery. These are the big guns here. The Bertha has the highest range, the highest damage, uh, although that firepower does come at a cost of 13,600 credits in-game, plus you have to be in-game level 6 to build it. So that is a very powerful unit. Now let's move on to the jamming units. First off, we have the Jammer. It has the least armor and the lowest range of the of all the jamming units, but it does not have a level requirement. You don't have to be a certain level to unlock it. And it is the lowest cost. Then we have the Sonya. You have to be in-game level 4 to build this. It has... Uh, it's pretty much the Archie of jamming units. It has more range than the Jammer, but less than the Dinger. Um, it actually has the most armor of all three of these jamming units, and it is also mobile, uh, as well as the jammer. Um, as opposed to the last one, the dinger. The dinger here has a very impressive range of jamming capacity, and it is immobile, it is a socketable unit, and it is very expensive. It is 10,000 in-game credits. I believe you have to be in-game level... Uh, in-game level 5 in order for you to build it. So one level higher than the Sonya, it definitely has more range than the Sonya, although it has less armor and it is immobile. Um, so, what do these units do? Uh, since we're on the topic of jamming units, uh, I will start with them. Jamming units can be used for various reasons, for various tactics. Uh, one of which being jamming the enemy's radar, or their mini-map. For instance, if you have units on your side of the map, and you don't want your enemy to see them on their mini-map, you can just place a jamming unit right next to them, and within the jamming unit's effective range, all units within that range will be concealed from the enemy's mini-map. Um, and... They can also be used for deterring artillery shots, which is probably their more common use. And artillery shots, we're going to uh, switch over to our artillery here. Artillery shots are for when, let's say, the enemy has created a very large clump of units, and they have spammed anti-air so that you cannot fly over there and bomb the area, and it has a lot of tanks so you can't send anything. What do you do? It's completely protected from everything except for artillery. All you need to do is build on artillery, aim it towards the units, it, it'll start firing away. It has a longer range than pretty much every single unit in the game, uh, maybe with the exception of the Bucky, which has an extended range, although it is highly inaccurate. So. Yes, the artillery are very good for uh, reaching very far away to try and either destroy units or maybe stealthily neutralizing an outpost. 
Uh, all of which we will go over in a few moments. So I will see you in a few seconds when I am in the game and displaying everything that both of these unit types can do. So I will be right back. Alright guys, I am back, and as you can see, I am in a 1v1, although this is not a normal match. I have asked this player, Giovanni, to help me out in this video. He has set up a unit cluster at the middle outpost. I will fly over it right now and show you. So yeah, if you saw that, that's a hell of a lot of tanks and a hell of a lot of hats. So there's pretty much no way that I can move my tanks up there because I'll die instantly to the hats. As you can see, I have two bombs in my build queue here. I'm going to attempt to bomb it. And I did drop the bombs, but then I die. So that would not really be a very effective tactic whatsoever because you would just be dying left and right and then the enemy would have plenty of chances to move their forces up to your outposts. So, um, what I did was I queued up some artillery instead. So, these are two Archies, they are the mid-tier artillery. And what you do to set up your artillery is you aim your air mech towards where you want your artillery to go, and then you just put your artillery down. So I'm going to put two down, and when I put them down you can see that there was a little red box there showing where the artillery is going to fire. That red box is its effective area. Anywhere within that red box, if there are any units within that box, uh, which only shows up just after you put the artillery down, then that's where units will be hit. So it's a good idea to sort of just fly ahead of your artillery a little bit just to see where the boxes are, just to make sure that you're actually aiming at something. So as you can see, the artillery... oh god. <laughs> The artillery are firing down on Giovanni's forces uh, without me having to do anything. They are long range, longer range than my tanks here, obviously, and as you can see, everything is just getting completely decimated. Uh, it may take a little while, depending on wit uh, what artillery you have and depending on if the enemy has a jamming unit, and right now, Giovanni does not have any jamming units on his side, which is why this is being so effective. Now, if he were to put down some jamming units there, my artillery would still be shooting at these units, although the shots would not be going directly at the units they are aiming for. So, as you can see, the artillery have pretty much destroyed every single unit at the middle outpost, and Giovanni is pretty much forceless now. He has no units uh, pretty much anywhere else. Uh, or so you think, because if I fly over to my outpost, or my fortress rather, you see on the minimap area, the map vision of my main fortress, you see that there is nothing at all. So I'm just looking around here within the range of my fortress, and what do we have here? We have a very large and potentially lethal cluster of longhorns here, all right next to this right here, which is... A Sonya. That is the mid-tier jamming unit, and because it is sitting right next to all of these tanks that are in the range of this Sonya, I cannot see them on my minimap. I can just look at them just on my screen, although I can't see them on my minimap. That is one of the wonders of the jamming unit. They can completely hide your units from the enemy's radar, allowing you to do secret pushes, secret drops, all sorts of secret stuff, or yeah, just pretty much a lot of hidden tactics. And uh, although it's not very common to see a uh, cloaked push, uh, it can be rather effective. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a cluster similar to what Giovanni had, except mine is going to have a jamming unit while his artillery are far, uh, firing down on my units so you can see what the jamming units do. So I will be right back. Alright guys, I am back and as you can see I have a unit cluster here being fired on by artillery and a tank just died. And I do not recommend this sort of cluster for anyone. Uh, this is a very clumped up unit cluster here and 
Uh, if you do make a line of defense or offense, I recommend spreading it out as far as you can. And as you can see, Giovanni has four Archies firing down on my units, but uh, if you have noticed, uh, my units are not dying very quickly, and you may be wondering why is that? Well, if you see right here where I'm shooting and pointing with my cursor, there is a Sonya. And what the Sonya is doing, it is actually deterring these artillery shots. It does not stop the shots completely, as I said before, but it does move them out of the way. As you can see, shots are going up there, just right there, all over the place. Though they are still hitting my units. Uh, this is the most common use of jamming units, is protection against artillery. If you don't have a jamming unit, uh, granted your units are still in danger of being destroyed by them, uh, they are definitely less susceptible than they would be if there was no jamming unit at all. And I am now going to uh, go over some helpful tactics and tips on how to counter uh, artillery spam and what to do when you have artillery and the enemy has a jamming unit. So I will once again be right guys, back. I am back. Now as you can see, I have a Bertha, which is the most powerful artillery unit, firing down at Giovanni's new forces here. And as you can see, there is a jammer protecting these tanks from my Bertha shots, which is pretty much making my Bertha do diddly squat, just firing at that same spot over and over again. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of that jammer. And if you didn't already know this, jammers are very susceptible to bombs. So all you really need to do is grab some bombs, hover over the jammer if there's no artillery, or anti-air rather, and drop a bomb. As you can see, that is now smoking, so all I have to do is get some more bombs, fly over it, drop them, and the jammer is now down, leaving my Bertha free to fire on Giovanni's forces at its regular capacity. And it is now directly impacting these tanks, and they are now going to go down uh, f uh, far, farly quicker. That, that is very bad grammar on my part, I apologize. Much quicker, there we go, that works. It's not preferable, but it works. Much quicker than, than they would with the jammer right there. Now, they may rebuild jammers, and they may build uh, Sonyas, which are not nearly as susceptible to bombs, although if you spam bombs enough, then you might be able to kill it. Uh, you can just keep destroying those jamming units, which is pretty much the most important thing of artillery fight is, of artillery fights. It's just destroy their jamming unit. Once their jamming unit is over, your artillery will have a very large upper hand, and your side will start to look just so much bigger than theirs because all of their stuff will be dying left and right due to your artillery. And I did not actually notice this. My bottom outpost has been neutralized. Um, right here, right here. Giovanni has apparently put down a hidden Archie right here. Is that an Archie? Yeah, that's an Archie. Uh, he has put down a hidden Archie right here and um, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna fly away. Well, I'm actually just going to recapture this momentarily for the radar vision because I need to show you guys that um, the Archie that Giovanni put down, once I've captured this outpost, it is out of the radar range, since there's practically no radar range whatsoever, of this outpost. So this artillery is just free to neutralize this outpost without me knowing, unless I fly by and see the shot or fly by and see the artillery itself. But that is another use of artillery, and it's long range is for hidden base neutralizing. I see that quite often, and it works pretty effectively. And that is pretty much that for the uses of artillery and jamming units. I'm going to get these creeps out of here because I don't want them interfering with anything. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's all I was going to try and cover. Uh, ooh, yes, one more thing. 
if you are in an artillery fight and you have just set up an artillery, don't expect it to do all of the work for you. If you set up an artillery, for instance, if I set up this Bertha here, and there were a lot of units right here, uh, they would all be dead because of this Bertha firing in, and I would ex expect the Bertha to eventually neutralize this outpost. Unfortunately, the Bertha is not in range of this outpost right now, so what I would have to do is I would actually have to just pick up my Bertha, put it a little bit closer. That's probably not in uh, proper alignment, so now you can see... Uh, the Bertha should start firing at the outpost. There it goes. It has just neutralized it in one shot. Jeez. Because there was only one infantry in the slot. Uh, so it is very important to micro around your artillery in an artillery fight because you want to be sure that your artillery are always shooting at something. If they are not always shooting at something, they are pretty much just wasted credits sitting on the field, not doing anything at all. So... Just micro around your artillery, uh, move it to spots where uh, more units are, fly ahead when you put it down to make sure that what you're aiming at is actually in the box. As you can see, w where I just aimed would probably just be in this little abyss here, not really shooting at anything. And I'm pretty sure that that's all I was going to cover for artillery, so I'm going to head back to my hangar right now and I will be right back yet again. Alrighty guys, this has been my air mech tutorial on jamming units and artillery. Uh, if you missed anything, please, if I missed anything, pardon me, if I missed anything, please tell me in the comments and I will attempt to answer it to the best of my ability. And uh, I apologize if this video seemed a little bit more mediocre than the other tutorial videos for air mech that are out there. Uh, I am quite new to tutorial videos, seeing as how this is really only my first official tutorial video. Official meaning um, like a walkthrough on units that are in the game and it should be this way for everyone. My previous tutorial video was just the way that I do things. This is the way that everyone should do things because it's the only way to do them. Um, so if you have any tips on how I could maybe improve how I make these videos uh, that would be greatly appreciated. If you don't have any tips, don't worry about it. Just try to enjoy the video. Um, before I do go, I do want to give a shout out to RUY. He is a fellow air mecher who has his own YouTube channel. And what he does on his channel is he casts all sorts of matches from air mech. From pros using tactics that make our jaws drop to the newer players using tactics that make us die laughing. So if you want to see all sorts of great air mech matches without having to find them yourself, RUI's channel is definitely the place to go. Not to mention, his casting videos are quite packed with information on how to become a more skilled air mecher. And he has also started hosting an air mech talk show called Air Mech Talk, in which some, uh, some fellow air mech players and he discuss the current state of the game and their input and ideas on what they think would make it better. So if you want a little more chill video of Airmec, I recommend you check out Airmec Talk on RUI's channel. Uh, I will be putting a link to his channel in the description of this video. I highly suggest you check his videos out, leave a like or a comment on his videos, and subscribe to his channel so you don't miss any new videos from him. He's just an awesome guy, he's pretty funny, and his videos are just top notch. So... Uh, yes, that is all I have to say. So, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you guys in Air Mech. Peace.